Hello everyone. Um, I'm making this video uh, not because um, I'm an expert in this subject matter at all. I'm making this video more just because uh, I wanted to kind of show how to do something possibly useful with uh, with a handful of open source tools that are uh, that are available to you. Um, I am not much of a music maker. I haven't made a whole lot of music in my life, but uh, every now and then I try to kind of dabble in it and fool around with it a little bit. And one of my primary frustrations has always been uh, getting the correct sounds, making the kind of instrument sounds that I want to get. Um, getting notes out isn't too much of a problem with uh, the many tracker programs that are available. You can just string notes together, and that's that's pretty straightforward if you have some understanding of music theory. Or even if you don't, you can just kind of experiment and fool around with it and put together some notes and make a song. That's, that's not too difficult. But the thing is, um, if you want to get a, a certain kind of sound out of your instruments, how do you do that? And that's something that I've always struggled with, and that's been one of my biggest challenges. Uh, and I, I, again, I'm making this video not because uh, I'm certainly an expert, certainly not an expert on this. Um, I maybe I'm completely wrong on this, but to me it seems like it's something that's actually very difficult, it's like surprisingly so, surprisingly challenging. Now there are many good programs that allow you to uh, make synth sounds, like for example. Um, one popular one is called uh, Zen Add Sub FX. And let me actually just bring that up and show you what it kind of looks like. Yeah, it's this program here, uh, which I think may actually be called, um, it seems to be called Sonic Ports now. I don't know if that's me being completely wrong or what, but so this program gives you a little keyboard here and you can kind of play notes on it. And you know you can fiddle around with this and that and um, actually where is the hold on where's the uh, oh here we go here's the advanced mode so here you can do really crazy things like fool around with uh, I don't even know what these things are like you know here's um, I guess that's a low pass filter and a high pass filter oh I see so you can get different sounds like um, uh, let's see where's the oh here we go here's the virtual keyboard. So you know you can experiment with this program and get kind of different kinds of sounds out of it. There are also uh, oh, here we go. If you go to edit instrument, you can also do other uh, goofball things here. I've never really been too proficient with this program, honestly. Uh, I've never really been able to get very good um, sounds out of it. I'm sure some people are are very skilled with it, but um, you know. Even so, this program is pretty much just good for synthesized sounds. So you can get kind of pretty good, you know, synth sound effects out of it if you want to make like electronic music or something like that. But um, it's not necessarily great for more uh, conventional instrument sounds. And you know, I kind of again, I kind of struggle. Sometimes I get music in my I head that I kind of when I'm thinking to myself, I sort of make up music in my head, and sometimes I have a very clear mental. Um, not image, because obviously this is audio we're talking about, but I guess the, the audio equivalent of, of an image. I have a very clear idea, a very clear sound in my mind of exactly what I would like um, you know, my instruments to sound like when I'm constructing music in my head. But how do you, how do you get those sounds out into the real world? Like a, a very, one of my favorite examples I think is, the, uh, or at least a, a very fairly recognizable example I think that's a favorite of mine is the um, beginning of Metropolis by Kraftwerk. If anybody uh, has heard that track, if, if if you haven't heard the track, if you listen to it, it's just like the, at the very beginning there's that and you know I, I'm probably not in, imitating it very well, but if you listen to it, you'll you'll hear it's it's very distinctive, and it's like I sometimes think, how do you get that sound? If you have that kind of a sound in your head and you want to get it out, how do you create that? How do you make something that has that timber. It's not a matter of pitch because pitch is just notes. It's not, you know, volume or any kind of simple thing like that. It's it's a matter of timber, which is much more complicated. Um, now there are excellent tracker programs like the one I'm going to show off in this video is uh, let's see where did I install it? Uh, I'm just trying to find it now. 
doing all my file work in this video with uh, the command prompt, and you should too. All right, here we go. So here's the program. There, you, know, you can't see the logo too well, I guess, but well, there we go. So, oh, and it's huge. This program is uh, LMMS, also known as Linux Multimedia Studio. Very good program. Uh, it's an excellent um, tracker, sequencer kind of program. So this is really a program not for making sounds um, like Zenad SubFX is for, nor is it really a program for editing audio, because that's something that you could do very well with a program like Audacity. This is really more specifically a program for putting notes together. Uh, and I apologize, the window's kind of huge, so it doesn't show up very well on this small uh, kind of cam studio window that I'm using, but you get the idea. So over here you can choose from different samples, and you know there are basses, bass loops, blah blah blah. If you open up instruments, one thing that's kind of aggravated me about this program is it doesn't appear to have any kind of electric guitars at all. It has um, a steel guitar, so you can take a steel guitar, actually if you, if you click on it, it plays it, which is nice. I guess that's something, but what if you want, like, a, you know, to c compose rock music uh, or something like that? And you don't, it doesn't really have a, it has a surprisingly limited volume of uh, uh, samples that it comes with. So, what if you want to sample music? Now, that, this is obviously very popular and very commonly done in many, um, uh, among many DJs and things like that. They'll take sound samples and just kind of. Uh, I don't want to say rip them off, but let's say borrow them for their own use. Um, and I think that this is fairly ethical. Sometimes I think, well, you know, you, you shouldn't take other people's instrument sounds, but I think it's, it's reasonably ethical because it's just a, a timbre of an instrument. It's not necessarily a melody or a, a tune or anything like that that you're borrowing. So um, I'm going to show you today primarily, and I've already used up a lot of time, I apologize, but primarily what I wanted to show you is how you can borrow a, uh, a sound from a sound file that you have and use it to make a, a sample that you can then use in a program like Linux Multimedia Sound Studio. So what I'm going to use for this purpose is, um, in my opinion, an excellent uh, track. Uh, let's see, I'm going to open up Winamp and it should, I think I already have the file loaded. Here we go, here's Winamp. Yeah, so the program, uh, not the program, the track that I have loaded into Winamp is this excellent piece of music from EG, which is an excellent game by the way, if you haven't played EG, you should definitely play it, I, I highly recommend it, a very good game. Now what I'm going for here, this is, this is a good track, but it really blows up at around, uh, I think it's two minutes into the track, there's a moment right around two minutes into the track where the guitars just kick in, and I tend to have it, those who know me and my musical tastes know that I tend to have a taste for tracks like this that start off very um, kind of mellow and uh, melodic and suddenly just just blow up around halfway through. So um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is open up that track in um, in Sound Recorder, if I can get it up, hold on, let's, let me see now. Um, Oh, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. You know what I need to do is I need to... Uh, that's what I forgot to do. Before you can edit, since um, that file actually came as an MP3, what you need to do first is turn that MP3 into a WAV file. So I'm going to do that quickly. And you can do this with Winamp, actually. Winamp comes... If you go here to Preferences and go to uh, Output Plugins, Winamp comes with a Disk Writer plugin that you can use. And then if you click on Play, it very quickly just blitzes through the whole file and actually creates a wave file out of it. So now that's turned it into a wave. And if I go into the EG music folder in my command line, which you can't see because it's off the bottom of the screen, but it's there, trust me. Um, where did it put that file? Oh, it put it in the um, in the um, root folder of my C drive, which is probably not a great place to put it, but oh well. I'm going to rename it to something a little simpler, like EG Original, just so I don't lose track. Hmm. Alright, here we go. And now I've loaded the file in Sound Recorder. And again, we can play it here. So around, I think it's around halfway through. 
right about here. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and this is a very poor way to do this. If you were really doing this properly, you'd do this using Audacity, because this kind of editing is exactly what Audacity is for. Uh, I'm using Sound Recorder just because it comes with Windows and it's quick and easy to use, uh, but this is a very ugly way to do it. You shouldn't do it this way. So I'm going to just put the cursor there and say delete the for current position, and I'm looking for something right around. I'll edit everything after that position, so I'm just trying to narrow down where the audio kicks in. So it's, you can delete everything before that. So let's say right around, if I delete everything before that, I'll delete just a little bit more, I'm just silly. Okay, that should be adequate. I think that's enough of that guitar sound effect that I'm looking for. There we go. It's kind of short, but oh well. Um, so I'll go ahead and save that. Actually, I'll just yeah, I'll just save it over the uh, the original, even though I probably shouldn't. But oh well, whatever. Um, I have the original as an MP3. I can just re re-encode it as a WAV file if necessary. Uh, I'm gonna rename it eg guitar dot wave. So now I have a very short WAV file of that guitar sound sample that I'm going for. Um, and I, I want to turn it into an OGG format file as well because that's what, um, that happens to be what um, LMMS works well with. So let me see, where's the, um, where do I have my encoder? Uh, here we go. Here we go. Very nice. So this program is Ogdrop XPD, which is a great program for um, for uh, easily turning WAV files into um, OGG files. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it in. Uh, here we go, f colon backslash temp. All you have to do then is just drag and drop the WAV file onto this little fishy here. And after a moment, the fishy turns it into an OGG file. And wow, I got some pretty good savings there. It turned it from a 21K WAV file into a 7K OGG file. It's like a one third of the original size, not bad. All right, fishy, you can go away. Just right click on him and say exit. All right, and now the last thing I'm going to do after I have my sample as an OGG file is I'm going to copy it into the um, um, data samples folder, uh, and then I'm actually going to put it in the instruments subfolder under that for um, for LMMS. There we go, that's been done. And you can't see what I'm doing, obviously, but it's just file work. I'm just copying the file into that folder. So very quickly now, because I'm running out of time, let's go ahead and run LMMS, very jolly looking program that it is. And I'll show you how to do this with LMMS now. Um, I'll try to shrink the window a little bit. So basically, we go here again to my samples, and I put it into the instruments folder. So look, check it out. Now we have the EG guitar sample that I was looking for. Let's get rid of these um, default tracks that it gives you and I'm just going to drag this over into here. And now we have it as a track. Awesome. So now that we have this here, it's available as a, as a track to us, um, we can press F7 to open up the piano roll and it says please open a pattern by double clicking on it. The patterns are these little gray bars here and I have no idea what the difference exactly is. I'm just going to go ahead and double click on the leftmost one just because that seems for some reason like a logical thing to do. And now the warning goes away and now we can string something together here. So let's go ahead and make like a C scale with our EG guitar sample. Actually, no, scratch that, delete that, start up here. Come on, how do I, oh, there we go. There we go. And you just, after you're done, you just press space to play what you have. And 
and press space again to stop. So there you go. That that sounds terrible because I think I used the wrong octave, but you get the idea. And after you're done with your project, you know you can say export, and you can choose to export it as a um, as a wave or as an OGG file. I'm out of time, but uh, I think you get the idea. This is basically how you take a sample, you pull it into 